the Best Docs Network helps you find some of the best doctors utilizing the latest procedures and practices in healthcare. Actual patients and the doctors themselves walk you through their stories that together help you make the best decision in your search for the right doctor. On today's episode, oral surgeon Dr. Paul Metz improves his patient's life with dental implants. Facial plastic surgeon Dr. Yadro Ducic discusses his philosophy on practicing medicine. ENT Dr. C.T. Wynn talks about a procedure called balloon sinuplasty. And doctors from Forest Park Medical Center utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. Originally, I was having a lot of sinus pressure. Pretty much all the time I had sinus pressure. And I had a lot of headaches. I would have sinus infections pretty much back to back. I'd have several sinus infection, infections a year. Amanda has consulted multiple ready clinic uh, urgent care. That does not really address her problem. All they did was to refill her prescription of antibiotics, gave her some antihistamine, and tell her to go home. What they do is they, they, they treat her symptoms instead of treating the, the, the cause of her problem. He basically just looked at my nose and kind of tried to figure out what the problems were based on the symptoms. And he noticed immediately that my turbinates were really big. The inferior turbinate is a normal structure in your nose that everybody has. It has a role of filtering and humidifying the air that you breathe in. So it becomes enlarged and inflamed when it is irritated by either allergies, infection, or pollution in the air. Considering her busy schedule, we decide upon a two-prong uh, approach treatment. Uh, balloon sinuplasty in office to treat her sinus issue and inferior turbinate reduction to relieve her nasal obstruction. I don't really have any more sinus issues. I haven't had a sinus infection since the surgery and it's been a few months now. The advantage of uh, balloon sinuplasty is that it can be done in office. There is no uh, general anesthesia. The cost is less than doing it in the hospital and the recovery time is really quick. There's really no downtime. The patient can go back to their daily activities uh, quickly. It was, it's actually kind of funny. There's a lot of things that I didn't realize were issues until after the surgery. I know one time I was sitting in my bathroom and I was sitting there and there was a candle about two feet away from me and I actually could smell it. <laughs> that was something that I have never done before and it kind of just hit me. I was like, I can actually smell the candle. <laughs> Did you know that establishing a bedtime ritual helps your body know when it is time to sleep? You can establish a bedtime ritual by doing the same things, such as brushing your teeth, reading a book, or listening to soothing music every night an hour or two before bedtime to relax your mind. I was afraid because I knew I, I couldn't walk anymore and I knew I had to have something done. My right leg, I just was unable to use anymore. I had arthritis all through my back, so my sciatic nerve was hitting on my spine, hitting on my disc, and then hitting on these joints, and that was what was causing the severe pain and the nerve damage that was going down my leg. Donna presented to me with a history of chronic uh, progressive back pain as well as uh, pain radiating into her lower extremity consistent with pinched nerve or sciatica. When I saw Dr. Bannister, as he talked, I could feel the stress just coming out of my body. I got here and he was kind. He took extra measures to make sure there was nothing else needed. So the surgery for her is actually called lumbar decompression and fusion. And that's where the starting point of the surgery, we remove the so-called lamina, basically the back of the bony canal so that her spinal sac is freed. We free up her exiting nerves 
and then we actually put some screws into the bone above and the bone below. Then we actually proceed with the fusion. I was walking when I left and I felt great and it was just amazing to be able to walk without pain again. Donna is doing well. Lumbar fusion to me is a big undertaking. I reserve lumbar fusion for those who have true slippage of their vertebral body one on the other. I do not perform a lot of lumbar fusion for back pain. I'm very careful. Thanks to Dr. Bannister, I'm walking. I'm without pain in my hips. I'm now able to drive. I spent months in the house not being able to and had to depend on someone else. And now then I feel freed. To learn more about Forest Park Medical Center and their doctors, go to bestdocsnetwork.com. You notice something about Forest Park Medical Center the moment you walk through the front door. Gone are the smells, the sights, and the sounds that are typically associated with most hospitals. And in their place is something decidedly different. You see, Forest Park Medical Center was designed to be comfortable, inviting, even calming. Fact is, many of our patients don't want to leave. Come experience for yourself what medical care should be. Forest Park Medical Center, your destination to better health. I didn't feel good about myself and I never wanted to go anywhere. Now my world has opened up. I occasionally go out with my girlfriends and we have a great time together. I was getting older and didn't really care about my weight, but my doctor said I needed to do something immediately. Now I'm spending time with my grandchildren and every moment seems special. My one reason was to live life again. My one reason was to simply live. So what's your one reason? Barker Bariatric Center. Log on or call today for your consultation. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. What is advanced lipid testing? Um, most of my patients say, well, I, I had my cholesterol checked with my doctor. I say, well, advanced lipid testing is different. It evaluates different parts of the cholesterol different uh, areas that we can effectively make change. So it's important to do an advanced lipid analysis. There are multiple companies who provide that service. But uh, ask your doctor to look at your lipids in a more advanced way because there are uh, things on the lipid analysis that can tell us if you have early diabetes, insulin resistance, if you have a high tendency towards clotting, if you're genetically prone towards having a heart attack or not. These are important questions that you need to know when we're sitting out there in the communities and um, we have physicians that may or may not know about these things, I think it's important that there are informational shows like this out there that can teach you, the public, to check on your own health. So ask your doctor for advanced lipid therapy. It's um, an amazing way to take hold of your own health. Before I met Dr. Duchik, I just felt like my skin was dull and spotty and splotchy and was constantly trying to search for makeups that would make a difference um, transitioning into my 50s. Skin care is obviously very, very important. The skin is what everybody sees. Uh, they don't see the underlying bone. If we do somebody's rhinoplasty, they're not looking at their cartilages, they're not looking at their jaws, their cheekbones, their eye sockets. They see the skin. That's the first thing they can see. So ideally, you want the skin to look as good as possible. Typically, Dr. Duchik does like me to see patients before they have surgery. He'll do a consultation and he'll send me in the room and say, please talk to them about skin care. Let's get their skin looking good first and then we'll, you know, discuss surgery. I always feel at home when, with Jennifer. She is a very um, well versed in skin care and she pays attention to my age and we stay really focused on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. Well, the whole point of doing cosmetic surgery on somebody is to make them look better and feel better about the way they look and more comfortable in their own skin, so to speak. And so one of the first things we always try to do is tune up the skin, uh, make the skin look as good as possible because then people oftentimes are so happy with their skin that they don't feel like they need to sometimes even do surgery. As you get older, your body kind of, you lose the collagen in your skin. 
Collagen's kind of like the springs in a mattress. You start to lose volume, um, and you'll start to notice fine lines and wrinkles. By um, stimulating the collagen, your skin will become firmer, and the wrinkles will start to dissipate. There's several different things that we offer that help stimulate collagen, one of them being the Dermapen. It creates micro injuries to the skin, and when the skin starts to heal, it starts to rebuild collagen, which is pretty amazing. And the goal is not to do surgery. The goal is just to make somebody look better. I no longer have to search for makeups that cover up. I just feel um, younger than I thought I was going to feel in my 50s and just feel brighter and that my skin finally is at a place where it's glowing. Has a question for Dr. Lindsay Arvizo. Why do I frequently lose my voice? People can lose their voice frequently for many reasons. It can be from an actual lesion on the vocal cord or a traumatic injury to the vocal cord or they're just using their voice incorrectly. If anyone has had vocal issues or hoarseness for more than two weeks, they should be evaluated by an ENT physician and have their vocal cords evaluated. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. My teeth needed to all be extracted. They were crumbling, they were breaking, I couldn't chew my food. He's a professional, you know, an accountant, and he's certainly concerned about finances and how to structure his, his budget. And he was a guy that um, his lower teeth were worse off than the uppers. And so that was an area that he decided to focus on. I guess this started in 2009, and this really happened in kind of in two settings. So that in 2009, we did the lower, and in 2011, we did the upper. The, the bottom is all done, and I'm in the midst of having the prosthesis on the top done. And also with David, his concern uh, regarding his budget, we were able to do this without grafting. Previously, in the upper jaw, because of the maxillary sinuses, we would have to graft those areas in majority of cases that we were placing a full jaw worth of implants. Uh, but with the advent of cone beam CT, we're able to look at individuals from a three-dimensional standpoint radiographically ahead of time so as to know where the bone is so that we can position implants within that bone and avoid the need for sinus grafting and then subsequently lower his overall cost significantly as well as increase the predictability. No longer do I have to make sure that everything is in place where it's supposed to be in place. It's, I have, I have a new chance and a brand new set of teeth, and they don't hurt. It's, it's a satisfying to see him come back smiling, see him walking down the hallway, uh, you know, standing upright with their, their chin up, smiling, and, and, and being much more confident. So it, it, from a psychological standpoint, outside of the health benefits that you see, uh, the mental health benefits are, are significant. I'm a CPA. I meet with clients and uh, of high net worth clients. Appearance is important to me. It's certainly not of the utmost importance, but it's important to me. And I don't want to be embarrassed by a, by a crumbling smile line. It's a wonderful, wonderful solution. Coming up on the second half of today's show, learn more about the Texas Heart Institute and their doctors with interventional cardiologist, Dr. Annie Varghese. Plastic surgeon Dr. David Altamira gives his patient the looks she's always wanted. Family medicine doctor Richard Honecker addresses common health concerns in our Medical Minute. Bariatric surgeon Dr. Scott Stowers with My Bariatric Solutions helps his patient lose weight. As well as more doctors from Forest Park Medical Center utilizing the latest in technology and techniques. I've experienced in my past uh, excessive weight gain. I would diet, lose, gain, lose. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. Um, I didn't feel good, and the more I, uh, I gained, the less I felt um, confidence. Uh, I had made the choice that I needed to really make the decision to change my life, 
to get my health back on track. Charlotte had a lap band procedure, which was one of the most common procedures that we do. Uh, she's been very successful for her. Uh, she lost her predicted weight that she wanted to, and the several different medications she took, she doesn't take anymore. I decided to have the uh, bariatric lap band at My Bariatric Solutions. I have a lot more energy. I strive to do things that I wouldn't have before, experience some uh, exciting things on some of my travels. A band is put in laparoscopically through small incisions in the skin. We put the band around the top of the stomach and it's a balloon, essentially. It has a port that goes up under the skin and we can put salt water in there to tighten the band up. That keeps the food in the top of the stomach and makes people feel not hungry with a small amount of food. It works like a long-term diet, only you feel full with small amounts of food. The most important part of a band patient doing well is frequent follow-ups and getting their band adjusted, especially early on. First six months, we will normally do about five adjustments until they learn how to use the band. After that, maybe one every six months, and then later on, maybe once a year. My experiences with Dr. Stowers and his staff is so easy. I arrive, I'm seen in a timely manner, in a professional manner, and people are so friendly and they treat me as a family. Each time is uh, very special and I look forward to uh, seeing the doctor. He's very friendly, very cordial, and very professional all at the same time. Request an appointment on bestdocsnetwork.com. Another reason to stay hydrated throughout the day is because your brain is composed of 75% water. Your brain will also begin shrinking a quarter percent in mass each year after the age of 30. How do you know the difference between having a bad cold and having allergies? It's important to know because sometimes that depends on whether you go to the doctor or not or whether you stay home or not from work or school. Well, uh, a bad cold is caused by a virus. So you generally have fever, you generally feel bad, you feel achy. The reason you feel achy is the viruses live in the tiny capillaries in your muscles. So in those capillaries, they swell up because the virus is there and then you hurt. Also, you generally uh, get chills and uh, have generally been exposed to someone who's had similar symptoms. Allergies, you generally tend to sneeze, you don't have achiness, you don't have fever, you don't have chills, uh, you may have itchy eyes and runny nose. Also, when you have a bad cold, your mucus, the stuff that comes out of your nose or your lungs, might be discolored, thick, yellow-green, whereas it's gonna be thin, clear, and watery when you have allergies. Now, there's different ways to treat these things, especially if there's a bacteria involved, you might need antibiotics. So basically, just remember, it's fever, chills and just feeling horrible all over. That usually means a bad cold with a virus in or a bacteria and you need to see your doctor. Otherwise, it's probably just allergies. Just get some stuff over the counter. I had kind of a bump up here on the bridge and the end kind of hung down a little bit. It just, it was a little bit big. And um, I think a couple times in my life, guys had made comments like, Oh, our kids would have really big noses. Well, Holly came in with, with the, the, just the thought that had bothered her for a long time, that her nose just didn't match her face. She's an otherwise very attractive young lady, but she'd always had just a, a large nose that was out of proportion to the rest of her face. I mean, overall, Dr. Altamira made the experience so easy and simple, and I think um, out of all the doctors that I spoke with, uh, he was the one who made me the most at ease with the process, and he said, you, know, you can always do more, but let's, let's do something modest for now, um, and it's just overall really comfortable. First, we talked to the patient at length. We, we asked them what they like about their nose and then what they don't like about their nose. There are certain things that you know, we can change and certain things we don't want to change if, if, they, if they're happy with that. We'll take several photographs from different angles, and then we can project them on the, on the computer screen for the patient, and we can actually morph the images to, to show the patient what, what they can possibly look like. And that way we can make sure we're on the same page as far as what the patient wants to look like and what, what can actually be accomplished in surgery so that they do have realistic expectations 
and we can kind of give them a good idea of what they're, they'll actually will look like after the surgery. The recovery time was really quick. Dr. Altamira had explained that it would hurt for um, a little bit, he even gave me painkillers, but I think I took two of them. It wasn't as painful nearly as I thought it would be. Um, and I think I had some soreness if I would touch it for maybe a month after, but overall it didn't hurt. Rhinoplasty is basically changing the shape of the nose. It can be done for a variety of reasons. Usually a lot of times just the patient has always felt their nose was too big for their face. They were never happy with their appearance. And so it's basically a great operation that can be used to reshape the person's nose to, uh, to match their face better. It was so exciting taking that Band-Aid off for the first time. Like, so when you look in, at yourself in the mirror, you always notice an imperfection that maybe you don't like. And for the first time I looked and thought, oh, my nose is adorable. <laughs>
recent study in the Journal of Periodontology shows that two ounces of yogurt a day may protect you from gum disease. The typical container of yogurt holds six ounces and the good bacteria in yogurt helps fight germs in your mouth. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. Welcome. Today we have with us Dr. James Willerson, who is the President and Medical Director of the Texas Heart Institute. Dr. Willerson, we're so thankful that you're with us today. Uh, welcome to our program. Thank you. We know that you've had a long history here in Texas with regard to um, the advancement of cardiovascular services. Would you tell us a little bit about the Texas Heart Institute? The Texas Heart Institute was founded in 1962 by Dr. Denton Cooley as a research and education entity. And I think he dreamed that it would train many doctors who wanted to be heart doctors, cardiologists, surgeons, electrophysiologists, pathologists, so on. But that it would also do research, which would be important in preventing cardiovascular disease and making it easier for people to tolerate it when they already had it. And that's the way it's worked out over the last 50 plus years. It is a, it's ranked number sixth in the United States. It's been ranked in the top 10 for each of the last 22 years consecutively. There is no other heart center in Texas for which that same thing has been true. And we have educated thousands of doctors in all areas of cardiovascular disease I know that your great passion is teaching, and I've been um, able to um, sit at your feet and actually learn from the master, and I just thank you for that. Thank you. Um, in front of the world, you are an amazing teacher. Thank you. And I know that you um, have taught many, probably thousands of students in internal medicine as well as cardiology. Um, we want to thank you for that, and, and what, what would you tell the world about um, those who have that love for cardiovascular medicine and to study medicine? What would you tell those students? Well, it is a passion, but it's based on the reflection that heart and vascular disease are the number one killers of men, women, and children, not only in the United States, but in the world. Cancer's a distant second, for instance, as a woman, you're more likely to die of heart and vascular disease than you are of all cancers combined. And as a woman, you're five times more likely to die of a heart attack than you are of breast cancer. And as a man, one out of 2.5 men worldwide will have some form of heart and vascular disease during their lives. A person dies in the United States every 26 seconds 24-7 of heart and vascular disease. So we want to let students know around the world to continue um, reaching for their passion of saving lives. Uh, and we thank you for being a leader in that, Dr. Thank Wilson. you very much. You're very kind. You are uh, a tremendous, um, tremendous person. I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. more videos on bestdocsnetwork.com. Didn't find the doctor you're looking for on today's episode? Head to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. There you can search our video library by topic, specialty, and doctor. The Best Docs Network, helping you find the right doctor and bringing medical education to you.